the Basutu nation will head to the polls today to elect a new government. The last election was held back in 2017 and the past years have been marred by a fair amount of controversy. For one, former Prime Minister Tom Tabani was forced to step down over murder charges while there have also been delays with the implementation of national constitutional reforms that are aimed at bringing about political stability. So let's unpack what the day is likely to look like given this context, bring in Africa analyst Crystal Orderson, who joins us now via our video link this morning. Great to have you with us, Crystal. Thanks so much indeed for making time on your birthday, no less. I should throw that in. Uh, we should perhaps begin by just taking stock more broadly of where Lesotho finds itself, given this major turbulence, uh, not only around Tom Tabani, but more broadly the ABC, the governing party, and just when you also consider some of the economic challenges the country is facing. How optimistic do you reckon people are that things will be different post today's election. Hey, good morning, Ayanda, and thanks um, for the focus on Lesotho, because I think it's very important, because I think often because it's inside South Africa, um, we don't, you know, fully unpack what is happening, because I do feel if Lesotho sneezes, South Africa will catch the cold, because ultimately it has an impact on the economy, on people's livelihood, and if people cannot eat, they will come to South Africa to, um, to survive. And if we can have political stability in Lesotho, I think it would be fantastic for Sadiq. So I think firstly, unfortunately, um, I was an election observer a few years ago, and I was able to travel around, speak to political parties. And ultimately, Ayanda, what's at the heart here is necessary constitutional reforms that needs to happen. What will this mean, essentially, is a new system that doesn't allow for political parties and pol politicians to simply call an election because they want to be in power. And ultimately, I think it's the political elites that want to ensure their own longevity. And actually, I don't believe they actually are doing it in the best interest of the country. And hence, we've seen these log jams. Because ultimately, if we've had these constitutional reforms that would have been passed, we would have not had the floor crossing. We would also rein in the powers of the Prime Minister, because as you know, um, the current Prime Minister, he actually implemented a state of emergency, and right. the court had to say, well, this is unlawful, um, and this for me is part of the political instability in our neighbouring country for the past few years, and I do feel that um, if we look at the, the stories and the sentiments echoed from political parties, from voters, and of course, including the Electoral Commission, they didn't have money, Ayanda, because when you have an election every so few years, it is an expensive exercise. And I don't think Lesotho has had the money. And so hence, the Electoral Commission, for instance, said that they don't have an electronic version of the voters' role, which is so essential um, in this day and age to have. Um, and so I think today will go peacefully. The Basutu nation we have known for years, peaceful. So there's not going to be any, any you know, funny business today, Ayanda. It is what happens in the next 48 hours in terms of political parties, politicians, accepting the will of the people. Yeah, it's an all too familiar sight on the continent, isn't it? Those with political ties wanting to cling on to power as much as they can for their own interests. It does also raise questions around the level of disillusion that perhaps some people in the Sutu may have today, given, again, just the track record of some of their leaders. I think so. I do think people are disillusioned because they've had so many elections. Of course, as you mentioned earlier, the Prime Minister, Tom Tabani, you know, kicked out of office because he was charged with murder. Of course, he's denied that charge. Um, and just simply the political instability. And I think it's so unfortunate, such a small nation, you know, population of over a billion. They, of course, supply us with water here in Johannesburg. Um, and economically, you know, COVID, um, massive lockdowns and the closure of borders have had an immense impact on people's livelihoods um, and simply survival. And so to have another election just post the COVID is just not great news for the country. And it's unfortunate that it's the political elites and those who want to remain in power are calling for this, not really thinking, let's think about the people. So I think unless there is a real concerted effort, I think from South Africa and SADC in particular, to really get these constitutional reforms going, Ayanda, I don't foresee any major political change if we don't see the necessary constitutional changes being implemented, being passed by lawmakers to see real change um, for the people of Basutu. 
really important that, in fact, we were in conversation with the IEC just this morning, and they've also conceded that the back and forth around these constitutional reforms have stifled their ability to prepare adequately for today's elections. To what extent do you reckon that could prove problematic uh, 48 hours later? Look, I mean, Yanda, having been an election observer in countries like Lesotho, Zambia, Nigeria, you know, when um, there's good people in an electoral body, um, there's checks and balances, you know, the system is there, you, you deliver your voting papers, um, you know, it's a peaceful election. My problem and my challenge always with, um, you know, as a journalist, as an analyst, and of course, as an election observer, it's that process after the counting. Um, we saw recently in Kenya, you know, the delay from the electoral body, um, you know, when they had to announce the election. And I think that is where the political challenge is coming. That's when you need a strong chairperson of the electoral body, an independent um, electoral body, commissioners that, you know, are serious about democracy building, take their role as electoral commissioners, serious, won't be intimidated by politicians or, pol or anyone interfering with the process. And for me, that is the importance. So I think, you know, today, despite the challenges, I really believe the electoral body will, you know, get their housing order. People will vote. I think apart from long queues, maybe delays in delivering voting material, I think it's going to happen. The electoral body, they've done this before. My worry is the post-counting period and the verification because like in other countries, you know, um, counting happens at the voting station. You know, political parties are part of that process. Um, so you can see, you know, the actual election result and what people have voted for. It's that communication from the voting station in that rural area to the capital, Masiru, and often, you know, that's where we must be very mindful. Um, I, I, I do feel optimistic. Um, the SADC, they've seen to be a massive, or well, massive, a big um, electoral, um, com, um, you know, observers. Sure. The Commonwealth thing. So, you know, that's where the checks and balances are in. But ultimately, um, yeah, the, you know, I'm a journalist. I'm, I, I'm sitting here, you know, you engaging on the topic. It's ultimately, you know, the will of the Lesotho people that has to be respected. Yeah. And for political parties to stop their narrow-minded self-interest, but actually think about the country and not themselves. So many important aspects to look out for. Crystal Orderson, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. And happy birthday from the AM Report. Really do appreciate your time. Crystal Orderson is an Africa analyst. Once again, thanks very much indeed.